Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching Newegg TV on our Twitch channel, which is at twitch.tv forward slash Newegg. If you didn't already know and you're watching on our YouTube channel, I'm reminding you guys too. All right, I'm Steve. I'm here with Nick, also from Game Crate. Hey, everybody. The man, the myth, the legend, the editor and chief. It's it's nice to see you in flesh, man. Yeah, we've both been running around a lot here and uh, haven't haven't gotten a chance to actually hang out that much. Seriously, right? Yeah. Like, I bumped into Kareem for, for maybe a drink, and that was pretty much it. Yeah. You guys yeah. had already gone and done everything you needed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but today we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about our experiences here in Las Vegas and a coverage of CES 2015. Now I need to stipulate one small thing, that is that I went to the suites today, which is technically not CES. Yeah. You guys might see that not being the difference, but CEA does. Um, and Nick, you of course went to the show floor today, right? Yeah, I, I checked out a couple things in the, okay. on the show floor and then actually one bungalow, which I don't know how that's different than a suite. It's but like they, when they have them out bungalow. front, right? Uh, no, it was like a three-story kind of thing. I'll talk about it. Wow, today. okay. Yeah, 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 you piqued my interest in the strange building type. Uh -huh. um, all right, guys, so I'm going to start off. Uh, my stuff is pretty short. Uh, I f first things first, uh, I'm going to start with A data because it starts with an A. Uh, they had DDR4 DIMMs that they had to release. Uh, not exactly anything new. We've already seen them on Facebook and, and probably several other uh, news articles at this particular point. Mm -hmm. uh, some other things that they had there, too, were the USB 3.1 um, enabled. I think there were USB drives. They also had a, a Thunderbolt SSD mm. uh, enclosure, but that's aside the point. Uh, USB 3.1. Uh, OTG adapter, uh, I, it's like OTG for 3.1 Type C, I think. It, maybe I'm confusing the two. I thought that was probably the most interesting thing they had there. Mm, Call me crazy. Uh, they also had a, a new SSD too, uh, putting up some good numbers. I think it was like 560 uh, megabytes per second read, and oh, I want to wow. say like 540, right? But I probably have those numbers a little bit wrong. Uh, it was an S10 uh, controller, similar to the one that, or actually the same one that uh, Corsair is using in their uh, in their new SSD. SD as well. Um, something else I thought was kind of strange, they had a, a USB drive with a fingerprint scanner. Oh, so, yeah, security. Right? Yeah. So, like, uh, what are you doing with my USB scanner, Nick? Like, or my, what are you doing with my USB stick, Nick? <laughs> Nothing, man. That's right, because it's got yeah. fingerprint scanning. So good to you. Yeah. Which we already know is like fallible, right? Like you could you could basically print it if you had some way of getting my fingerprints or an image of them or whatever. Yeah, if you have any secure data, it seems like these days what you really want to do is have it just printed out hard copies only in a briefcase handcuffed to your wrist. Like <laughs> That's the only way to actually keep things secure these days. <laughs> oh, God. Could you imagine what today would be like if that's what we had to do? Oh, I'd hate myself. Yeah. Um, uh, so moving along, I, I also just came back from Cooler Master's suite. Uh, there they, they have... They're restructuring their uh, their progments, their products into different segments. All right, so they're categorizing them now into three different segments, and I believe that is the essentials, mainstream, and performance. Mm, okay. um, and the reasoning behind that, if that is the actual names, because I can't recall them off the top of my head, um, is because they know that it's been very difficult for them to classify all of their different products in which segments they should be in and how they should be uh, uh, recommending them to users out there. So they decided let's let's start categorizing everything. Mm -hmm. um, Start with things that you probably needed or wanted to, know, or the cheapest possible product that gives you the basics that you need. That so that'd right. be the essentials, and then moving on up from there. Mm -hmm. uh, chassis were a little bit different. Um, they are they have a fourth segment, the mm -hmm. ultra segment, uh, because the Cosmos Two just didn't fit um, in in with performance. It was yeah. just so much further. It's mm -hmm. like their flagship, right? Mm -hmm. um, they are working on doing this for everything else. So in other words, they might have an ultra for everything else too. Okay. They, they're not saying when or, or if it'll even happen at all, but uh, that's something I, I should mention. And also they're, they're, they're going to start recommending everybody uh, depending on what your desires are and what your price point is into one of these categories too. Probably not everything. Like mm -hmm. you could probably get like a, a super high performance uh, power supply, let's say, and maybe and go lower end with a couple other things maybe to fit your budget. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So that that was that was that was kind of cool. Um, what was really cool was the prototype stuff that they were showing off. Mm -hmm. Specifically, they had a 3D heat pipe that, that, that they were showing off there, oh. um, and and it sounds like super crazy, but really all it is is they're they're taking a the standard format for heat pipe that which is normally apparently uh, soldered on. I actually don't know how that the how they're manufactured, but he was explaining to me, uh, I think it was John, uh, that they're actually soldered on all the different heat pipes onto one uh, plate 
the cold plate actually that would st stand on top of your CPU or your mm. GPU or whatever you end up attaching it to. Yeah. Uh, bottom line, you end up being able to get a lot more performance out of something if you create it all as one solid block. That's why like CNC metal objects end up conducting heat much better. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so so they were talking about that for uh, for a second, and then we also uh, bumped into Cool Chip Technologies, uh, a prototype that they've done along with Cooler Master. And it is a basically a fan heat sink combined design. Mm. Uh, benefit to that is they can be they can dissipate much more heat much more quietly. Oh yeah, um, super cool. Seems like it might be a little bit uh, cost ineffective right mm. now because they're kind of putting things together in such a way that it requires CNCing and out of solid solid metal, and that's obviously way more expensive than like a plastic fan over heat fins or, or a fin array. Um, but it's really cool because basically as the as the blower spins, mm -hmm. uh, I think they call it a, an engine or something like that. But anyways, so the the, the fan itself is actually the turbine, uh, like a blower style fan you might imagine, except that they're spiraling out from the center. On top of that, it's all made out of metal, so it's it's uh, sinking in the heat as well and then dissipating oh. it as it spins. Yeah. And then they have a series of, of um, like rings of plates that go around that fan. Mm -hmm. So it's blowing across these um, this fin array that's that's in line with the air the way it's coming out. It's it's sort of something you have to see. Check out the video as soon as it's done. Anna's literally behind me <laughs> uh, working on these these videos, so please stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. uh, then EVGA. Mm -hmm. Went to EV, EVGA's booth. Um, quick and dirty, uh, they're, they talked to us about the brand new nine, nine, GTX 980 Kingpin Edition um, graphics card, uh, which is which is really sweet. Mm -hmm. um, they've got a, uh, they've got a back plate. They've also got a plate across the the front of the the components, keeping the VRMs and the uh, the memory cool. Uh, on top of that, there was some things that he was talking about that involve. Uh, memory actually needing to be heated up because uh, if, oh. you're, if you're not familiar with Kingpin, mm -hmm. he's world class overclocker. Right. Uh, Vincent's awesome, uh, but he always uses LN2. That's like a, his, his primary uh, uh, method of cooling. And af after a certain point, memory action needs to be warmed up. Mm -hmm. Typically, he would use something like a, a heat gun just to warm it up really quickly or a dryer. Mm -hmm. uh, but now he doesn't have to. According to EVGA, he can just use the the heating element that they've uh, put in there to keep the memory warm. So they, they got it. So everything so cold that now they have to heat up the specific right? parts of it again. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So apparently, I didn't know this, but basically memory can get so cold that you end up getting, uh, you end up being unstable. Oh, yeah, that so, makes sense, I guess. Yeah, the yeah. GPU, the <laughs> CPU, that, that needs to get really cold, but uh, the memory needs to, to get to a certain temperature and not go below that. Gotcha. Um, they also uh, showed us the 970 for the Win Edition, the FTW Edition. Uh, that's awesome. So that, that's coming you guys' way. Um, also, they, they showed some new peripherals, new mice, and new keyboard. Mm. Um, specifically, one keyboard and several new mice. Mm -hmm. uh, skipping over the mice for a moment, um, or, or, or basically just skipping over it because the keyboard was really the, the better of the, the products to talk about, I think. Um, the new keyboard has an LCD screen on it, oh. and it's going to connect in with EVGA's Precision uh, software. Mm -hmm. And pretty much everything that you can see in Precision, you'll be able to see on that LCD screen. Oh, wow, that so, sounds fun. Right? So that, that's, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, the, it, it's... It didn't. It, the LCD screen itself kind of seemed like it wasn't. It didn't have the high, highest contrast ratio. But mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's because that particular model was just a prototype. Actually, it was. I remember he did say prototype. it was a prototype. So uh -huh. it wasn't. It wasn't final. Um, but that looked pretty cool. But going back to the mice, just to talk about it for a second, I think it was two um, infrared mice and one laser mouse. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, so the. They're separating them into different classes once again. So they have a really low end infrared mouse, mm -hmm. and then two uh, mids, and then topping out with their with their main mouse. That actually it's slipping my the torque. I think it is is uh -huh. the yeah. is yeah. their top of the line mouse. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I say that that pretty much covers my day today. Yeah, sounds like a fun day. Yeah, it was it was nuts, man. It was yeah. completely crazy. Okay, but great, uh, great. but go ahead. So what happened on your day? All right. Well, uh, we actually got to start early on the show floor thanks to Samsung. They nice. uh, they got us down there, special guest of Samsung, grease by the front gate and everything. So that that was nice. Cool. Um, Samsung's really big this year on the Internet of Things. Uh, I've been hearing about this kind of stuff for for years now about, you know, how all the devices that you have, that you have in your home and that you carry with you are all going to be connected and all going to work together seamlessly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Samsung's really making the push that we're actually getting there. Like we're going to have it soon. Um, they've okay. partnered with uh, the company called Smart Things to really kind of make this happen. Um, Smart Things are making Internet of Things. Yes, Smart Things, Internet okay. of Things. Yeah, it's it's the rise of the Internet of Things is actually what they said in their uh, 
okay. in their keynote yesterday, which uh, is a Terminator reference that I don't think anybody. <laughs> I didn't until you explicitly yeah. called it out. Okay. Yeah, it can get all these uh, connected devices can get a little freaky if mm -hmm. you think about it that way. Like they all, you know, it tracks where you are all day. You, you're listening to a song in your car, and then you go into your home, and it picks up exactly where you know the song was when you were in the car. So that, it's a lot of stuff like that where it's nothing you need really, yeah. but if it could really happen and it, if it could all be seamless, it would really feel like we live in the future. I you just, know, like, I don't know, like, I, for me, it's like, the music is one thing, right? That's right, that's great, right. but like an audiobook is way more, I mean, it's the same idea. Right, But yeah. an audiobook, I think, is a way better example of something. Um, anyways, but yeah, please continue. Yeah, I mean, they, they talk about, like, the heater and the lights and the, you know, mm -hmm. th those things, it really strikes me as, who really needs to have the temperature just perfect when they walk in the door of their home? But if you could have it, man, that would be nice, you know. Yeah. Or have the lights come on without the need for a switch. That's what you see in every science fiction movie to indicate it's the future, yeah. and it's just about here. Like, it's you know. For me, it's not going to be cool until we have Jarvis. If we yeah, have a home yeah. Jarvis, yeah. I'm all in. Well, now we're now we're good. Not Jarvis necessarily, but they did have their their partnership with BMW on display, where they have the car that'll you know you you just let it know that you're ready and it'll okay. swing out of your your driveway and pick you up in front of your house. Run over or, you your know, cat for you. It'll be great. You'll love it. Uh, ideally like not, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just some some base level Batmobile stuff where yeah. it comes and picks you up where you are. So, so I think that was that was pretty cool. That was well put. Yeah. Base level Batmobile <laughs> stuff. I love that. Nick. Yeah. And aside from the the Internet of Things, everything's curved, right? Okay. All the Samsung stuff is curved. They have their their all in one PC with the curved display. Yep. Their curved monitors that you can use for gaming or mm -hmm. for you know whatever you're gonna uh, whatever you're gonna be doing and Probably the thing that stood out for me the most, and eventually this will be written up on Game Crate probably tomorrow, cool. is they had a, a curved TV that's not for sale yet, but it's 105 inches. It's, uh, it's on a big stand, and it can be flat or curve, and you just change from one to the other with the remote. So it's like motorized yeah, it, arms I mean, it's or something. Com it's completely silent, so it must be uh, it must be running on some really impressive technology there. But it's <laughs> it's twenty one nine aspect ratio. You know, it's nine. much much cool. wider than it is tall. Um, but according to Samsung, they have proprietary technology where if you're watching diff stuff from a different aspect ratio, mm -hmm. it will scale it properly. It's you know their proprietary patented technology okay. that nobody else has. So, or if you prefer the black bars, they always have the black bar option. So, so then I'm curious by by scaling. Did you get to see it firsthand? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So so then by scaling it properly, are they are they cropping and zooming? Are you losing I, something? I mean, you know that that has to be what it is. They okay. can't create extra content to right. fill in the stuff. Right. But because it's Samsung proprietary technology, it's probably much better than you know the the regular versions you see of that, like on TV where it just zooms in and it's 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 cool. not uh, it's not what okay. you, it's not the experience you want. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's not quite this 105 inch curvable TV is not quite for sale yet. But the Samsung rep there was talking about how the existing 105 inch model that they have that doesn't curve is over a hundred thousand dollars. So you can only imagine now this is one that's going to curve is yeah. going to be north of a hundred thousand dollars. So so I'll just get two of them then. Yeah, I don't yeah. have to worry. I'll put one in my bedroom and one <laughs> in my living room. Yeah, and you got to you got to make sure you have the floor space right because it curves. You can't mount it. So it has to sit no, on the stand, yeah, right, I on mean, the ground. But by, 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 but in general, though, I could like get it to fit into a room that's too small. Yeah, there you because go. Because it can curve. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, yeah, yeah the, the funniest thing about that for me is, you know, yeah. I was you're looking at this marvel of technology, this right. this curvable 105 inch. Uh, it's their SUHD. It's their you know Samsung Ultra HD TV, mm -hmm. and the Samsung rep. The, then it, there was another guy in the booth asking him questions, and he asked him, "Oh, is this is this 8K?" And the guy's like, no, it's it's 4K. It's like, it's a 105 inch TV that bends at the, you know, is yeah. that not enough for you? It also needs to be 8K. 8K. It's like 8K is there's nothing 8K. What what uh, what LG TVs were there last year that were all curved? What what yeah. resolution were those at? Uh, Maybe I, he, that's what he's thinking. Those were probably 4K. If Samsung did okay. have some 8K potential displays there, okay. but. There's no 8K content, so I don't know why you need 8K. But he wants to go home and make 8K, yeah. 8K content, that's, Nick. That's, the CE, that's CES for you. Everything yeah. needs to be the newest thing, yeah. right? Um, aside, yeah. Aside from the curved displays, uh, they also had the omnidirectional speakers um, that people have been talking about that look exactly like a combination of a portal turret and uh, Eve from Wally. 
Wow. Yeah. I, so then it's shaped like a yeah. like a tear or yep. upside down teardrop. Or yeah. I, yeah. And they you can hang them from the ceiling. They have stands so you can have them just sitting next to your TV and wow. 360 degrees of sound. But they do look so much like the portal turret. I kind of wish that they had gotten like licensing. Yeah, just get them licensed <laughs> and make it look exactly like. Are that. you still there, Nick? Are you still there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. And then uh, the last thing at the Samsung booth was I tried their their Gear VR. I played a game uh -huh. called Protocol Zero, which is kind of like a siphon filter style thing. Okay. Um, okay. It was it was fun, but I started to get really nauseated, and I had to stop because I, I wasn't going to ruin Samsung's show before it even began. By what, how sick awesome all over the place. So you have a picture of yourself. Uh, I think it's your Google Plus or some profile. Yeah, that's it's my commenting on Game Crate and everything with the Oculus. So yeah. here's my suggestion. We go back again. We get you plastered. You put it on. Oh, you get super sick. And we freeze frame it just as you're vomiting. And we place that <laughs> picture with this picture. <laughs> OK. Sounds like a plan. Sounds Let's like a plan? It. Let's okay. do it. So um, I'm uh, curious though, before we go further, because yeah. I know I know VR has a, has that hurdle to go over for people to get sick. So, mm -hmm. do you get motion sick at all? Like you traveling? know, I didn't used to. When I was younger, I didn't used to. But you know, hmm. I, Star Tours is the good example. When I was younger, Dude, Star Tours yeah. was my favorite ride. Now yeah. I can't do it anymore at Disneyland because I get sick. What, I, what I don't year? Know. What do you think? You're 25 ish when that started happening? Because post 25, definitely. Yeah. Okay. I, I, st I was not able to handle it so well anymore. And, but when I did Oculus though, yeah. when I did Oculus at CES last year, yeah. I was fine. So I think it also matters the kind of movement because the game I played in Oculus was the Valkyrie space dogfighting game. Oh, dude, that'll get think, you every time. And that one worked for me. Oh, that did it? Okay. I, I the think opposite. It's, I think it's because of the gradual motion of flying through okay. space. Okay, okay, gradual. Because the versus... one I played today is like herky jerky, where you're you're a guy and you actually click with the controller and then you move and then you stop and you move and you stop. Because in Valkyrie, you hmm. never stop moving okay. because you're gliding through space. And I had an easier time with that. You know what's funny for me? I actually, I, I prefer, even in the, the demos that they provide for DK2s, mm -hmm. um, to be able to move and then at my own pace. But, oh, but really? gameplay, like performance gameplay where I'm like, or competitive gameplay where I really need to kill you in a game, like, yeah, like yeah. Wh whatever, first person shooter or in like uh, Elite Dangerous, mm -hmm. I get super nauseous. But I get nauseous anytime I'm in a vehicle moving where my eyes or my body is thinking I'm moving one direction or not moving. Yes, and yeah. and 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 they're just not cor uh, correlating together. So yeah, that's that. I mean, that is a hurdle. I'm sure they'll they're working on it, and it's getting yeah. smoother all the time. But uh, yeah. it's not quite there yet. Yeah. Uh, so if you're 24, now yes, is the time to VR. Now. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah. After Samsung, we headed right over to Intel. Intel had us lined up for a, a tour of their booth and everything that they've got going on. Okay. Um, they have their new Broadwell U uh, process processor powered uh, two and ones and ultra books uh, that just you know, that came out this week just better power longer life better graphics so you're going to start cool. seeing those all roll out for sale okay. um, in the in the coming months um, really the thing that they were showing off the most that was i think the most impressive to me is all of their real sense 3d camera technology mm. and we're actually going to run Something through an article that. on game crate uh, that i just published about uh, an hour ago nice uh, about the things that, the highlights that we saw at the booth there so yeah, we, we have the screen up at, at uh, the top here, and that's um, that's an interactive wall they have, Intel has in their booth, taking advantage of their RealSense uh, 3D camera technology, where you, you. You, that's basically your digital image, right? Mm -hmm. Translated into the clouds and into, um, into the stars, and if a meteor goes by, you can reach out and grab it, and it explodes in a crazy nebula and everything, and it's a whole interactive wall there. Um, I need to ask you, yeah. um, the, the camera is what's doing it. So in other words, the yes. cameras are above or below or something like that, and yeah, it's watching yeah. you get to a certain distance, and then you can grab it. Yeah, yeah. Like the it, stuff you see in the mall where it's the other way around. Yes, yeah. Okay. It's, if, if you're... Um, and really, the impressive thing was the lack of lag, just how quickly it, it, you know, there's no real lag between you moving and the thing moving. It's reflected almost instantly. Nice. And with handling, like, you know, dozens and dozens of people on the same screen at the same time, it was really impressive. Cool. They had another one where you could make it snow, you know, interacting with different kinds of materials. Wow. Um, let's go scroll down a little bit in there. Yeah. So that is the uh, uh, the Dell Venue 8 7000 tablet, okay. which has the RealSense 3D camera on the back of it. And so you just take pictures as normal with mm -hmm. this tablet, but it captures depth in a way that like you just haven't seen in a camera before. Hmm. So you're not going to be taking like you're not going to make a 3D movie with this, but mm -hmm. you take a normal picture 
And then that picture later on, this is the, the camera where you can adjust the focus after the fact. Right. So if your camera happened to take the, you know, focus on something close and like, oh, I actually want to focus on the back, it's as simple as tapping on the image okay. and it'll blur out the stuff in the foreground, focus in on something that had previously been blurry in the background. So I'm curious, yeah. is, uh, is that because it's just got um, everything in fo focus to begin with and then it's yeah. like post-processing yeah. the blurriness in later? Yeah, right. and okay. yeah, it, it can, you know, focus, make the key focus on different parts of the image because it's already captured depth in that one snapshot that you've taken. And it's captured depth with the real sense okay. uh, technology cameras. Cool. Um, one of the things you can do with that is actually you can tie that into how you apply filters. And uh, the Intel rep there was showing us. Oh, filter different layers of the image? Yeah, it's oh, a wow. standard wow. You know, Android filter where you can like make parts of the image black and white. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have a figure in the foreground you want in color and you want the rest black and white. It's as simple as selecting the filter and then they have a depth of field slider okay. and it'll automatically just gray out the background stuff and hmm. keep the foreground image in, in color. Okay. And like as somebody who has to mess around in Photoshop for Game Crate all the time, that can take a long time to do. <laughs> but this was just a matter of like a dut 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 done. Like nice. It, it that's basically the, the coolest thing about the real sense camera on a tablet. Mm -hmm is a lot of Photoshop stuff you won't have to do anymore. Okay. Like there's a, um, and then, Instagram's been doing that for a while too, right? I mean, not this, but yeah. that's what they're, they're trying to get people away from being able to do that and do it in your own phone. <laughs> yeah, on the yeah, fly. and just yeah. the fact that you can, uh, you know, it'll know how far away parts of the, the image are automatically cool. and you can like, gray out and apply different filters to it and everything that's just it's just really cool not that you guys are going to do that you're not going to do that stuff that's like <laughs> old stuff you're going to want something totally different right right like the stuff we see every day on on instagram <laughs> anyways i'm kidding yeah. let's uh, uh scroll down a little bit and sure. um yeah, so then they showed off several uh, tablets and or several notebooks that they had with the real sense cameras on the, the top bezel there. Mm -hmm. um, and so these really function as kind of a close range connect. Okay. Um, it, it's optimized for between 3 to 18 inches away from the screen. Okay. And so this game here is uh, Lego Portal Racers. It's a demo game that they have on display. It's basically Audio Surf, if you've played Audio Surf. I haven't, but I've seen the game many yeah. times, and it looks exactly like You're that. racing along a, a track, but you steer by leaning to the right and leaning to the left. But you have to be within like a foot and a half of it? Well, it's the standard range you would be away from your tablet. Okay, or good. Your, so you're uh, not like, notebook when you're using it. Put it on your lap. No, yeah. it's, you can just have it on the desk, and it because it, it tracks your head, and you <laughs> lean left and right, and you go off a jump, and then you want to pick up the power-ups, you raise your your hand and you pick up the power-ups and so this is just a you know a little Lego racing game That's but funny. you can really see the potential like if they made a version of audio surf that integrated this so it's a rhythm it's a music rhythm racing game that tracks your head and tracks where your hands are and everything there's just there's, there's a ton of possibility yeah there. there's so yeah. much potential it's just they're waiting for there needs to be more widespread adoption of the real sense cameras and there needs to be developer support. Right, um, right. If you scroll down a little bit more, there's another image of another similar game. So uh, that game there is uh, basically Lemmings, where you're oh, trying lemmings. to, yeah, you're, nice. it, it's, uh, I think it's called oh, it's got your hand or there. something. Yeah, you're trying to, you, the guys start coming off, the little figurines start coming off one side of the screen and you have to get them to the goal. And the way you get them to the goal is by literally them. using the silhouette of your hands and they'll walk along your hand and you can lift up your hands and the guys will, you know, stay oh, supported cool. by your hand there. So like a younger age group, this is for, for kids to play around or, or adults that just want to try out the technology. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I could see if, if the people who made World of Goo you know, decided to make a puzzle game that involved your hand and like connecting different parts of it, or you could physically be manipulating the world of Goop because it tracks the joints of your hands. Gotcha. In real sense cameras. Okay. Like there's a lot of potential here, but again, it just they're waiting for the adoption and they're waiting for the developer support. So adoption aside and developer support aside, how well did it work? Yeah, that's that's really the key is that mm -hmm. all of this stuff just worked. Like we've had Good. similar kinds of okay. things like this before, mm -hmm. but this just worked. You know, they had a. Hmm a thing that would turn your expressions and, and your talking into a, coming out of like a Pixar style animated head. Right, and right. You could swap between like, you could be a pug, you could be a robot, you could be an orc and different things. And it was like seamless, no lag, you're talking, you're making facial expressions and it's reflected on screen, you know, instantaneously almost. That, you, that you was the most impressive head. thing is, okay. you know, it really feels like, oh, this is actually ready now. This isn't a, a, a diversion. It's like, oh, this could be fun someday. It's like, oh, this is ready technology. That last image there is me, uh, me waving and becoming stars. Right, that oh. black part in the middle is me holding up the camera. But yeah, okay, okay. So I was, I was really so into you're that. You're kind of one-handing, right? waving like this. Yes, right? yeah. Okay. I was really into the wall they had there. 
That um, is pretty cool. So it's like, so I kind of get like maybe the artistic approach to it is just you are you are interacting with this game instead of it being like a funny outline or something. Yeah, they made it like you're a cosmic force in this right. demo. Right, right, so, right. Yeah. So um, that's yes. pretty cool. So that's it for yeah. Intel. Um, and the last thing I did. Uh, it was a suite, but it, the Cosmopolitan, they're called bungalows, I guess. Cool. Um, so in Steel Series, is at the Cosmopolitan bungalows. And uh, they had a couple of things to show off. The first thing is their uh, Sentry eye tracker. Uh, we have an article up on Game Crate about that if you haven't read about it before. But it is a device that's on sale now directly from Steel Series. It attaches to the bottom of your monitor. Kay. It watches your eyes with uh, three different infrared sensors. It hmm. scans your eyes 50 times per second. Kay. And it knows where you're looking on the screen. Um, so Steel Series knows where I'm looking. Yes, they're, okay. they're, they're watching you watching the screen, right? <laughs> Um, so there are two good. main applications of the Sentry. The one is for like eSports training. Okay. And right now it fully supports Dota 2 and StarCraft 2, but you can use it with any game, but those are the ones that are fully supported. They'll give you like I fixation you. stats and you know how often you look at your mini map, map per second, and it can generate a heat map of the screen after a gaming session. I love it. Yeah. And so that's great for training then, because basically yeah. you are identifying what you are or are not doing correctly, exactly. and then giving you praise for that or not, if it's a digital train. Right, right. right. And they're working with a lot of different esports uh, e teams and esports athletes to develop benchmarks for like, wow. you know, oh, this is how uh, this is how often this you know esports pr uh, professional looks at different parts of the screen. Screen, then I this you. is what you do. Yeah, maybe so. You, you should maybe check this part. On top of that, often, your right? clicks per second are way off what you should be doing. Right, but right, so, yeah. so all of them are metric. I bet Kareem was here right now. He's probably going, but it doesn't matter. He's yelling <laughs> at the monitor right now. Um, but, but I mean, I think the reality is that it's all steps that can be used to help you. Yeah. But you still need to understand some of the core techniques and what you right. need to be doing. Like, I, like for instance, FPS. I'm most of my attention is on the the radar. So, mm -hmm. like, my heat map would be all over here. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. we're you know we're we're getting there. This thing just went on sale, the Sentry just went on sale, so we're still mm -hmm. waiting for the, the full adoption of it. But okay. aside from the eSports possibilities, the other mm -hmm. big thing, they uh, SteelSeries just had a party this past weekend where they brought a lot of streamers in cool. because the Sentry integrates with streaming and you can have a, a My Vision overlay where people watching you game, there's a little circle looking? that shows where your eyes are throughout the entire streaming experience. So how does that work then? Is it an overlay that stays there so that when you're streaming, it yeah. shows up? Yeah, you, okay. you'll be streaming. It actually, it, they've said they've tested it with a lot of different streaming things. It works best with the uh, OpenOBS uh, is the one that it works best with so far. So it integrates with that? Yes. OK, yeah. so it's, then, it's just doing it on the stream, on the way out, as right. a post-processing thing. Right, okay. right. And um, cool. so they, you know, the, and the streamer's feedback was really positive. They said it really feels like something else they can offer their viewing audience, right? You can actually see a little, you know, you can actually make it a heart or an amoeba that like morphs across the screen, you know. <laughs> but you can see what exactly what the person is looking at, what the, the player is looking at at different times. It's just kind of a, you know, a next level kind of streaming experience, which I thought was pretty cool. Really cool. Um, yeah. And then the, the last thing I have is uh, the Steel Series Apex M800, their new mechanical keyboard. It, it's just coming out now. Um, okay. It's actually the first one they have now where. They, you know, they don't have cherry switches anymore, right? They, like everybody else, are trying to find other sources of switches. So, uh, Steel Series' answer to that is they have their uh, linear QS1 switch. They gave me a little keychain that has one here, uh, designed with Kali. Uh, they worked with Kali to make their switch. their own, yeah, their own switch. Really dedicated for speed is really what they're they're going for. So they've, uh, yeah. Go for it. Cool. Yeah, we were testing it out earlier because it has the the 60 million clicks, so we we can try it and see if we can break it, right? Um, yeah, never, <laughs> never getting there. <laughs> yeah, I I asked Steel Series like you know, there's some people who just swear by it has to be cherry or nothing, right? If it's not a cherry switch, then they're not not going to go. So I asked them, you know, what what do you have to say to those people? And they said, well, they didn't leave cherry by choice, right? It's it's a matter of shortage, and you know, they just don't have the the access to them anymore. So they looked at it as an opportunity. What if Cherry had never existed, what would they have done? And they would have made their own switches, right? They would have decided, you know, and the Cherry switches weren't originally intended for gaming, too. You know, they came out of a, a different background. So Completely, yeah. this is built from Health. the ground up for gaming, in, you know, with gaming in mind. It's not quite as loud as a lot of the other Cherry ones, which some people might not like, some people might like. But, you know, SteelSeries is saying, you know, a lot of the things we've taken for granted about what a switch has to be doesn't
doesn't actually have to be. And so with their Apex M800, they're they're trying something new. They're trying this new switch, and they're they're really happy with the results. Cool. So, far. so basically, what it is is probably get back to Steel Series after you yourself, if you end up buying one of those keyboards, mm -hmm. try it out, and you're like, ah, I'm not really liking this, and then give them feedback basically because yeah. they're making this switch. They need that kind of stuff. I'm right. Assuming. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, that was it for my idea. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, well, Nick, uh, thanks so much for for taking the time tonight. I know you have not been feeling well, and I really appreciate you coming. <laughs> yeah, on, I, I so. came into CES sick, which is you're supposed to leave CES sick. So yeah. may, maybe I'll feel great by Friday. Yeah, yeah. Jen, Jenny too. I know. I know she's she's under the weather as well. Myself, I'm just now getting sick, so <laughs> I'm still doing pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we should be on maybe 5.30ish, maybe 6 o'clock by tomorrow, depending on how things work out. Uh, but thank you so much for your patience and for watching, and we will see you guys very soon. Bye, guys.